Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Demo December from Kimberbell with Material Girls Quilt Boutique. I am Amy, and I'm so happy to have you here today. Hopefully I can live up to the expectations of last week's fantastic demo. A lot of you um, watched and tuned in. I greatly appreciate that. And we are um, hopefully going to learn just as exciting stuff today that we learned last week. It's been a little bit of a whirlwind here the last hour and a half because I really wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do. The pressure to top what I did last week was really, really great. So I'll give everybody a few minutes to join in here. Say hello. I would love to hear from you. Where are you tuning in from? How is your day going? Um, I want to make sure that everyone can hear me. You can see my screen. I'm going to try to do this without any technical difficulties this week. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's see. I'm gonna put a couple of links in the chat. Not that one. Today, we have a couple of things that I'm going to talk about first this week. We are going to talk about, hello, Miss Heather. So let's go ahead and get started. It is after 12. So again, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming back for demo number two. Oh, thank you, Miss Sharon. Do you have any snow out there in Utah? Um, and I'm sure, Ms. Heather, do you have, do you have snow in Michigan? Um, I love snow. I don't like cold weather. If I'm going to have cold weather, there better be white snow on the ground. So it's been a struggle the last two days because it's really cold here in Maryland. The wind is blowing, but we don't have any white stuff from, coming from the sky. So I don't like cold weather without snow on the ground. At least there's something pretty for me to look at. We are going to talk about Kimberbell, Bl Kimberbell blanks today. Um, we're going to look at using them as they were intended, plus looking at other ways to use them outside of the box. We are going to um, look at the tote bags. Well, let's just jump here. In the world of Kimberbell, we have a variety of blanks that she gives, makes available. They are basically there as ready made, ready to be embroidered on, finished um, accessories. Um, embellishment, embellish them. What's really great is that most of the um, embellishments, or excuse me, most of the blanks are going to be unsewn up the sides so that we can easily get them to lay flat inside of a hoop, okay? And it just makes the embroidery so much easier if we are not um, having to unsew something or figure out what or how we're going to get it in the hoop. Okay, so that's what's really great about that. She has also um, given us some pillow forms that match in size to her pillow blanks. And so we have uh, 18 inch squares, we have a bench pillow form that's designed to fit into her bench pillows. 
We now have a new 12 inch round pillow, which you will see um, a lot probably used in 2024. And let's see, we've got some zipper pouches. Okay, one second, I'm trying to remember I forgot a link for us today. <laughs> I'm trying to pull that up and talk at the same time, which is not going so hot. So the biggest thing that I want to do is we're going to look at some of the blanks just with some Kimberbell designs on them. Uh, some of them are older designs. I will try to let you know where they are from and if they are still available, but they're not. Um, okay. All right. So we're going to look at them first and then we're going to design a towel hanger. We're going to take a little bit of what we learned last week and apply it to a um, towel and add a few new techniques as well. So we're going to come over to the table so that we can kind of get an overall look at designs. I'm trying to, give me one second, I am. There we go. Hello, Miss Mary. Oh, four inches of snow. I'm so, so jealous. Okay. So laying right there on top, we have an apron. Okay. So we have, there are two color aprons that Kimberbell has for us. They are, um, there's this gray pinstripe and then there's a yellow pinstripe that is out there and available. This just has a, I believe this was a um, fill in the blank or a dealer exclusive design that's stitched on here. Wasn't, doesn't have to be on an apron. That's the great thing about the Kimberbell designs is that they really can go anywhere. Um, her aprons have adjustable neck straps as well as uh, large waist ties. There are lots of projects. The aprons are very, very long. And so there's lots of information out there about folding it up and shortening it and then creating pockets if you're more into the um, shorter apron. That's there. So there are two Kimberbell aprons. You may still find some onesies from Kimberbell. They have been retired. Uh, we still have a few onesies. What was great about a onesie from Kimberbell is that if you've ever tried to embroider a onesie, you know it's hard. It's small, can't really get it in a hoop, doesn't really lay flat, has to be something that you kind of babysit in the embroidery machine. So the Kimberbell onesies were unsewn on one side and then they laid flat in the hoop. And then once you did the embroidery, you just ran a straight stitch from the sleeve down to the, it's right here, down on this side down to the bottom. The inside seam was surged for you, so all was done, and it was great. They came in gray and uh, peach with sizes from, I think, three months all the way to 12 months. And so there's still a few um, up on our website, and I'll give you a link um, in just a little bit to all the blanks that we have out there. Um, so onesies were really great. We do still have some dog pet kerchiefs available that came with two in a package. I believe we have the gray ones left. There was a gray version and a tan version. I think the gray is what remains. Um, multiple size, it, it came as one size and then you, she, the instructions walked you through um, and sizing it down to fit whatever neck width you needed for your animal. As always, tea towels. Um, she's got some plain tea towels, polka dots and stripes, and then we have some waffle tea towels as well. Tote bags, probably the uh, number one thing, her first blank that she came out that was unsewn down the side. So I have lots of tote bags. When you purchase a tote bag, there are a few different colors available. The tote bag is not sewn up the side, so it's one large rectangle with handles. Once you do your embroidery, 
okay? Again, it lays nice and flat in the hoop. Once you do the embroidery, you can fold it right sides together and just sew the side seams. Again, that side seam was pre-surged so that when you sew it back up, it's not a raw edge. It's nice and finished for you. There's lots of things that we can do to the tote bag. This, if you just fold it in half, is gonna give you a standard just flat like tote bag, carry tote bag. You could easily box the corner on the tote bag and you would box the corners in the traditional manner that you would normally box a corner. And then that gives the tote bag a gusset. Okay, so it gives it a little bit of um, depth. Okay, that's there. So there is the tote bag. This was um, an inch and a half square that gives you a three inch gusset in the tote bag. The other thing that we can do with the tote bags is she made a uh, casserole dish or a pie carrier with the tote bag. Okay, so doing your embroidery and basically folding the two ends of the tote bag into the middle and then sewing up the side. And then now you've got a casserole carrier that is there for you as well. Then with tote bags, we've taken it a step further Rather than, well, after you have boxed the corners, we can also line the tote bag. And so we have gone through and lined the tote bags as well so that they're pretty on the inside like they are on the outside. And with lining the tote bags, um, we've also added a ruffle to the lining. So you can fancy up these tote bags however you would like. Um, they are a canvas denim type feel, so they're a little bit of a sturdier fabric. There is a plain muslin um, colored tote bag. It's a little bit thinner. That's there. You can embellish up the handles. I have a document for you. It's nothing fancy. One of my customers fancied up tote bags um, and has given us the written down jotted down kind of the instructions that she does for lining a Kimberbell tote bag. So I'll put that chat, that come that link in the chat. I will also add it to the video descriptions after we're done here today so that you can um, find it at a later date. This is this tote bag design that's here, the sewing with my nomies is from a um, Kimberbell event, so it's not available outside of attending that event. Um, this was from the, this kitchen is seasoned with love, is from a fill in the blank design that I can get to you. And then this one here was from a retired event. This one is a, um, was a fill in the blank design, I think from two years ago that we had. Um, it actually has the little holes that you could punch out and add twinkle lights to this bag. And then this design was a dealer exclusive prior to digital dealer exclusive. So this, you have to take a class inside of a store in order to get, and the same with this um, floral tote bag. I'm hoping that some of these um, non-digital exclusives to dealers, sh they've, they've since been retired, that maybe we'll see them pop up in a vault um, later down the road. While we're on the line of tote bags, I want to talk about embroidering on a tote bag or a shirt that's already sewn up and you're not really in the mood to unsew it, okay? So with Bernina's, um, our Berninas have free arms that actually can be accessed from inside the embroidery module. So we can actually embroider on this, just this side of the tote bag without having to unsew anything, okay? Without having to turn the tote bag inside out. We have a specialty hoop, okay? This is the free arm hoop. Um, for the Bernina. So I'm just going to pretend like I'm aligned this. I'm going to take the 
inner ring, or excuse me, the outer ring clamp. It's going to go inside of the bag or your item or your shirt. It's going to get positioned just through the layer that we want to embroider. Okay. Now obviously there would be stabilizer in there. All that would be there. And then when we come over to the machine, so let's come over here. If I slide my tray table off, this, the reason our modules look like this is so that we're able to slide tubular things around our free arm. Now, I just did that backwards, so give me one second. This has got to go this way. Okay. So I can take my tote bag, I can slide it underneath the arm, and then I can clamp the hoop to the machine. So underneath of the machine, I have the bottom half of my bag. Here on top of the machine is just the side of the tote bag that I want to embroider. Okay. Now, the biggest thing being that with this particular hoop size, you know, we are limited in terms of the width of the design or the height of the design, but it does make not needing to use sticky stabilizer, not really having to babysit because you've got all of the tote bag turned up and you're working from the inside um, that's there. So the Bernina free arm hoop is going to work with um, all of the five series, seven and eight series modules um, on the on my website if you go to it it'll give you an exact list of the models that it will fit in okay and work on if you've not updated your machine in a while you may need to update it so that it will show the large free arm um, in your um, list of possible hoops okay then we have the quilted pillows Okay, Kimberbell has quilted pillow covers. We have um, rectangle or lumbar pillows that are like 12 by 18. And then we also have 18 inch squares. They, all, they are a variety of different colors that are available and they are each, each color is quilted in a different quilt design. Okay, what's great, again, unsewn, invisible zipper is already installed so that I can do my embroidery on the pillow. One second. I can do my embroidery on the pillow while it lays flat, and then all I have to do is put it right sides together, sew up the sides. My pillow's already in, my zipper's already in there. I don't even have to do that. And then it's ready to go. And then we have a coordinating 12 by 18 pillow form for our lumbar pillow size quilted pillows. Okay. All right. Those are the blanks that are available from Kimberbell. We're going to talk about embroidering a towel. And this is our little towel project that we're going to do today. This design is from the uh, Let It Snow pennant banners. I forgot to check, I think it's, a, I believe it's a retired design, but it's in the vault that you could download. But again, designed for a pennant banner. So we are going to um, look at that. Um, question is, is that function exclusive to that machine? The machine that I'm using or to Bernina? Um, I, I'm not 100% sure if other brands have the ability to do free arm embroidery like we do. I don't believe so. I do believe Bernina um, is the only ones that have a module position situated the way that we do for being able to free arm embroider. So that's the only thing as I do not have an, an exact answer for that particular question. With the um, 
One second. Let me read all these questions here. <laughs> all right, I'm also going to Do I have any questions? Okay. So let's take a look at our simulator. This is the design. And like I told you, it was originally designed to be a little hanging pennant banner. I don't need it to be a pennant banner. I can't really tell the size of the design because I have these extra lines that create the stitch and flip of the pennant banner. Um, I don't need for my design. I only want these hearts and I want the words. So just like we did last week, we're going to ungroup this design and we're gonna delete the items we don't need so that we can get an exact size of this design. So just as a review, we're going to go into I, we're going to go into ungroup, we're going to ungroup it, and then I'm going to work my way through deleting all the items that I don't want. And then I'm going to go all the way up here to the very last color stop, and I'm also going to delete that. And then I want to come back down to color number one and I'm going to go in and I'm going to regroup everything together so that if I need to move this design or I want to uh, make it bigger, make it smaller, I will be able to do that in just one touch. Okay. Question is, um, opening the chat window, you have to be logged into YouTube. I believe in order to get a uh, chat window. Okay. That I, I believe is the answer to that question. Uh, all right, so I have a design. I'm gonna use a, an oval hoop for this project. So we're gonna open up the oval hoop. And this design would be ready for me to stitch. Now the question being is, how do I get my design in the hoop and how do I find where it's going to land and things along that lines. Do I have to hoop the towel? No, you do not have to hoop the towel. I am going to uh, show you how to use sticky stabilizer. Oh, excuse me. Let me get my, this is what happens when you can't find a USB stick. You then get a new one, and then one day you find all your USB sticks. <laughs> so I do have a, I will put up a link to this tutorial here. I still have the wash away stabilizer um, on this. This tutorial uses a uh, standard tea towel. It's like 18 by 27, which is about the dimension that the Kimberbell towels are. And she cuts it in half. So one towel gives you two towel hangers. The way that she folds it is basically you have a four inch center pleat that's right here. So I have a design that can't be, I have an area that can't be larger than four inches. Okay. So I'm going to, I marked the center of that area. I've also pre-folded the pleat. I'm going to unfold it all in order to embroider it but I've pre-folded it so I kind of know where things are. I've marked my line and I kind of marked an area where I think I want a design. This design we're actually going to put a um, gingerbread man on this towel. And so I've just kind of marked where I want him. It's not really, doesn't have to land here. It's really there mostly so I can get this onto the hoop in a, um, and get it in there as straight as I possibly can. Okay, so with Kimberbell, she has given us in the last few years, we have centering crosshairs. And many of you may not know about them or may be very familiar with them. 
These crosshairs are designed to help you get something in the hoop that you're not going to actually physically hoop. Okay. So I am going to come over to the machine because I have placed in my hoop sticky stabilizer. Okay. So I've got sticky stabilizer in here. I'm going to put my hoop on the machine and I'm going to run this crosshair and it's going to stitch directly into my stabilizer a cross right in the center of the hoop. And we will um, use that to get our towel into place. Okay. So we'll give that a second to stitch. Like I said, I've marked my crosshair already. I'm going to unfold all of this. I'm going to pull my, my crosshair design off the machine. And I am going to basically line up. One second. I'm going to line up this crosshair here with what's in the hoop. Okay. And so I can kind of fold it in half. I could mark the wrong side of my project. I can fold it and align it. If it's a fairly thin piece of fabric, you've marked it, you may be able to turn it over and see the marking through the back of the hoop. Okay, so you can see if you have lined it up. All right. So I'm going to put that on the hoop. I'm going to call that close enough, as they say, for government work. Okay? Because I'm also going to show you today how to use pinpoint. Because if you've got it, you might as well learn how to use it. This towel is textured. Okay? It's a waffle weave. So I need to cover up the area in which I plan to stitch because otherwise my embroidery is not going to be um, pretty. Okay, things are going to kind of disappear into the valleys of my waffle weave. I also need this to stay where I want it to stay. And I don't really want to put pins in it because, you know, we could accidentally hit a pin and maybe I don't want to pin it. But some of you have basting boxes built into your machines and I'm going to show you how to use those as well. Over back on the machine. So I have my crosshair still there. I'm just going to go ahead and add my design to this and we're going to add the little gingerbread man. Okay, that's there. And so I could have completely set up this design before I ever stitched the crosshairs. I could have opened the crosshairs and put in my design and I would be ready to go. And then we are ready to basically embroider. Okay, one second. When we send this to the machine, let's get a hoop on here. We're going to send it over to the machine and we've already stitched crosshairs. Okay. But up here in the upper corner, we have a dotted box. This is your basting function. If I touch that box once, it is going to put a box right around my embroidery design. My embroidery design just fits in it. The second time I touch that box, it's going to put a basting box around the perimeter of my hoop. Okay. Either one works. I prefer to use the one around the design. It's also, it stabilizes the area closest to where we're going to embroider. Okay. So we're going to run this basting box. So I'm going to come over to the machine. But before I run this basting box, I want to get my design where I want it to be. Okay. And with my towel, I have this area that there is no waffle and I've got the band where the waffle weave starts. I want my gingerbread man to sit I want his feet to be right there at where that border stops and the waffle begins. 
Okay, so if I, one second, I need to know where his feet are. Okay, so give me one second. We're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to set something up here so that we can see, just give me one second. We're just going to do this live because I want you to be able to see the simulator screen at the same time that the machine is moving. Okay, because it's hard to visualize when you're doing it on the simulator because you can't see the hoop move. So what I'm wanting is I want to know exactly where the bottom of this little man's feet are so that I can make sure that they get put exactly here where I want it. Your machine, depending on the model of your machine, but this started with the 830s, the big 830, not the old, old 830. In your hoop functions over here, you have this little option that shows a butterfly inside of a hoop and that's called virtual positioning. You want to make sure that that's turned on. If you are going to do the next step and your hoop is not moving when you touch the screen, it's possible that your virtual positioning is turned off. So we want to make sure that it's turned on. So mine is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my screen and I'm going to touch, right, not, I can zoom in here, a little, a little bit out, actually. I'm going to touch on my screen. If you touch right below where his legs are, the machine will actually jump to the closest stitch, okay, of his legs. So if I just touch the screen, you just saw that the hoop moved. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way for a moment. So I can lower my needle. Let's move you a little closer. I can lower my needle and see exactly where that stitch on this design is going to land. And if it's not where I want it to land, I'm going to move the design using my stitch width and length knobs until that little guy lands where I want it to land. Now, when I go to embroider this, it's going to go and his feet are going to land right there at that border. But I've only checked one foot. What about the other foot, Amy? Just touch on the screen again and check his other foot. You want to check another location on the machine, just you want to know exactly where his eyeballs are, touch his eyes, and the machine will go exactly where that is, okay? <clears throat> what if I didn't hoop straight? What if this towel had a stripe, or it does kind of, it is kind of, straight with it being a waffle weave we do have some straight lines that are in there that would probably be a little obvious especially if we had a design that was you know a word or things along that lines and this is where pinpoint comes into place i'm going to open up i and pinpoint is right here i'm going to open up pinpoint we have two different options for pinpoint. I'm going to just do the top option, the two points, so that it gives my design nine little dots. And I get to pick two of them. If I see, these are the dots that I want to use. Two of these bottom dots, because I also want to make sure that if this is not we're going to make it crooked in the hoop straight. I'm 
we can fix it, okay? I want to make sure center matches center. So I'm going to come over to the design. I'm going to touch the middle dot. And when I touch the middle dot, the design moves to that location. Now, it's hard. It may be hard to see with the light, but I'm now below where I want, and I'm, I want to be over here where this line is marked. So I'm going to use my knobs, again, to move my design until my needle goes down at my line and right at the border that I want. Okay, got it where I want it. Once I've done that, I'm gonna hit the word set. Okay, and that's going to act like you just hammered a nail right there. This little design is not going to move anymore. He only pivots uh, basically along that point. So I'm going to go and either grab the left hand lower dot or the right hand. Um, I'm going to go left here and the design's going to move. Okay. Let me go back here. Hold on. I didn't hit set before I did that on the screen. Now, I am looking at where this little guy is at, okay? I need this needle to be up here going into the area. He needs to be up here. So I need to move my design up, okay? It doesn't need to go over. It just needs to go straight up. So I'm going to use my stitch length knob. And I'm going to turn this design straight up. And you're going to start to see on screen, he's probably going to go a little crooked. You'll also notice on the second position that it takes a little bit more to turn your design. Okay. So the, it's a really, really fine tune. Thank you, Ms. Karen. That second point that when you're pinpointing, it takes a lot more turning of your knobs to get it to move, especially if you need to move it a lot because obviously we want to be exact. And if it made big movement when we were doing this, we wouldn't be able to be exact. Then I have it all where I want it to be and I would hit the word set again. Okay. Now, when I hit the word set, my yellow dots disappear, and I can close out the design, or close out this option, and then I am ready to embroider. First things up is gonna be my basting box. So let me get my design on here. Let me get my stabilizer, my, my Stitch 2.0 covered up. Now I highly recommend when you run a basting box that you raise your bobbin thread um, before you start a basting box. Pull your bobbin thread up and hold both tails when you start. Basting boxes do not have tie-ins on them. Okay. So, meaning there's not going to be a knot there, that way it comes off really easily. It is not going to tie off. And so if we don't kind of hold our bobbin and it's a really long stitch, it sometimes will not start stitching. It'll skip a first, the first few stitches until we get started. Now this basting box is what I'm going to use to one, hold the stabilizer to my, um, my towel to the stabilizer and hold my, my wash away to the towel. Okay, I'm gonna trim that tail. And then in this particular little guy, the next step is gonna be the uh, placement line for his body. And we're not gonna work all the way through this. but I want to see if his feet land where I want them to land.
perfect. Okay, I'll pop this off here so that you can see it. Up close and personal. Now I know the, uh, the pinpoint functionality um, is other brands have, they have cameras and sim similar options so that you kind of can do the same thing with it. Let's come over here to this. So you can see his feet land exactly in the same location on both sides of center. Okay. And when I get this out of the hoop, even though it's in this hoop crooked, I'll be, my gingerbread man will stand up straight. Okay. Do I have questions? Anybody have questions for me? I'll gladly answer. Okay. And then you'd work through the rest of the particular embroidery design. Nothing, um, nothing, anything different. When I get the embroidery design finished, I will then use just a seam ripper, pull out my basting boxes, and carefully tear away the excess stabilizer on top and then carefully tear away the excess stabilizer on the back side of the embroidery, okay? And then you work through assembling the parts of the towel according to the tutorial. Okay, so let me put that link to the video here. It is not a video by me. Um, I. I'm a true believer in supporting other creators and why reinvent the wheel if somebody already does it. Um, and her video is very detailed, measurements are all there, and she walks step by step. So it is a, a great video for you as well. This week, what's new? Um, newly released here is the Save the Date Pillow Panel Collection, since we're talking about blanks. Um, the oat colored pillow that these are buttoned to in the back is just a Kimberbell blank. There are four buttons attached to that pillow and then these little pillow date pieces button on and off. And so it's one pillow with um, interchangeable designs. I believe it's 10 designs um, that you have. They come five by seven or in larger. There are two size designs um, that you can, they are double hooping, okay? So they're double hoop embroidery. You'll hoop one, the first number, and then you'll hoop the second number. That way you can have a nine by nine or a 12 by 12 panel. So in the, um, on the right, that picture uh, shows you the nine by nine, which is done on the five by seven hoop. And the back, the back pillow is the 12 by 12 panel which is done in uh, larger, uh, maybe six by tens. I didn't, I didn't fully open um, the design file, uh, but I think it may be five by seven and six by 10. Uh, but again, they are multi-hooped, okay? These are digital downloads. And so digital downloads are done through the Camberbell uh, website, which you can navigate to from my website. We do make a small commission from Kimberbell, so it's like purchasing from us and supporting us. So we appreciate it. Let me get that in there for you as well. Okay, on sale this week. Starting today through Saturday night, Kimberbell blanks. All the Kimberbell blanks are 10% um, off. Did I do it at 10? I didn't tell you, but they're 10% off. <laughs> we have all sorts of them. We have the felt zipper pouches. We have the velveteen zipper pouches, tote bags, wine, the navy velvet wine bags, aprons, tea towels. Um, they're all there. You can find all of the um, Kimberbell blanks here. 
on our website as well. And again, like I said, I'll put these in the video uh, description as well so you can come back to them. I am going to be releasing the, well I did, they're up online already. There, we have a limited number of kits for the Demo December poinsettia jar topper. I have to save some for my in-person demonstration, but after the in-person, uh, whatever is available will go up uh, remaining online. It is scraps. It is not a large amount of anything. If you've been doing Kimberbell for a while, you probably have excess velveteen, you have excess felt um, for this project. You probably even have scraps of flexi foam or any soft and stable um, that is used in here. And so I just wanted to kind of give you an idea here as the sizes that you need. Our kits contain two colors of felt and one piece of velveteen, okay? And that matches identically to the, all of the marketing images that you have seen. The kit will make multiple um, jars in both sizes, okay? Because they're much larger than what you particularly need. We have the red uh, poinsettia that has the cherry felt, the crimson velveteen, and the pine felt. There is the white poinsettia, and this is very limited because the white velveteen has been retired. So I did what I could. So we have white velveteen, or what they call antique white. There is embroidery antique white felt and prickly pear felt. The thing to note is that wherever she uses felt, you could use anything as long as it doesn't ravel, okay, because that edge on the felt pieces are, is not finished, okay? It's a raw edge. You're going to stitch it and then you're going to trim it around the edge. The piece with the velveteen is satin stitched around the edge. So you could, I think it would be, and I'm going to try to get one done, um, really beautiful if you took a piece of the applique glitter, fused it to a piece of fabric, and then used that for your applique um, in the design. We all have plenty of scraps of pieces of, of uh, applique glitter. Uh, you have to fuse, Kimberbell's applique glitter needs to be fused to um, a piece of fabric in order to use it because again, it is, it's got heat, it's got glue on the back of it. The OESD Lux Sparkle Vinyl, you could use where she uses felt because the sparkle vinyl is backed in a, um, a like a knit backing so it doesn't ravel and it is thick enough that you could easily use that in place of these um, options. And then the pink colored uh, project is the blush velveteen and then there is the pistachio felt and the sun-kissed peach um, felt as well. You may have scraps of blush velveteen if you did 2022's Demo December because that velveteen was in that pillow as the border and I think maybe the backing but if you didn't use it for backing um, you may still have some there. Again just a reminder registration is open for the Kimberbell Embroidery membership for 2024. Your code word for today, since I've just talked your leg off here, uh, is Santa. So jot down your um, code word. Again, if you don't have, it haven't had a chance, let me get your, the link to the code word document, which is probably not gonna show up here quickly for me. Um, oh, there it is. That was faster. So if you need a little tracker card, you can download that and write in your words. The secret, oh, that's secret word number two. Forgot to make that typo, sorry. Uh, secret word number one can be found in demo number one's video, which I will also link in the description if you haven't found it or haven't watched it already this week. Well, I appreciate everyone for joining us today. I hope that you learned something and that you found it informational. We will see you again next Wednesday at noon for our final 
Demo December demo. Next week, we will be talking about um, the jar topper. I'm going to walk through how to make the jar topper and things for this particular project and then how you're going to get your, um, your design. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate again everybody for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of the day and a great week and I'll see you back here next week. Thanks everyone.